It was a normal day in the Sodor Kingdom, and Thomas was getting ready to take some stone trucks to the docks. Well, I'm off, said Thomas. Brenham Docks, here I come. It was a lovely day, and Thomas was making great time. The trucks were behaving well, but then again, that was because these ones didn't have faces. But Thomas was soon forced to take a detour due to a broken piece of track. Thomas had not been on this track for a long time. He soon came to a high bridge. He suddenly began to get a feeling, the feeling of remembering something from long ago. I feel like I've crossed this bridge with someone before, but who was it? Actually, I think that someone and I jumped the bridge, because we were being chased by something, but what was it? Then, it all came back to him. Oh, hey, I remember now. The engine who jumped the bridge with me was Frankie the Diesel. She used to work with me when I came out of the factory. And we were being chased by an evil oil tender named Fungus. And Frankie and I fell into the river, but we were rescued by some good trucks, or well, at least I was. And those good trucks' names were... Wallace, Sonic, Mario, Wally, and um, who was the last one? But Thomas was so distracted that he didn't see another broken piece of track. It was right next to a small cliff. Before Thomas knew it, he was coming off the rails and sliding towards the edge. Whoa! Oh no! cried Thomas as he slid off the edge. Ah! Ah! Ouch! Thomas hit the ground with a big thud, and his trucks quickly followed. One by one, they plunged off the edge, and each one fell on Thomas. Finally, the large brake van slipped and tumbled down the cliff. Rise and shine, Scaredy. Oh, right. I keep forgetting. With Scaredy gone, I've been having to help Chester deliver the extra oil, said Connor. It's just so sad, isn't it, said Mario? It is indeed, said Connor. Good strength coming through, said Caitlin. <sighs> I know how you feel, Harry, said Andrew. Here, come watch some TV with us. Maybe that'll help cheer you up. Yeah, said Ethan. I think you'll like Eddie Wayne. Ready or not, here I go. Whoa! Oh, ow! Keep rolling. Ow! Oh, okay, cut. This was an episode? Oh no, this is just part of the blooper reel. The blooper reel is about two and a half hours long. <laughs> Why did this have to happen to us? 
I'm pretty sure I don't know, said Vinny. A few weeks ago, Harry had gone to the Furnace Kingdom to find his friend Scaredy, who had uncovered a plan where a brake van named Frida had been planning to destroy all truck leaders. Scaredy and his Furnace Kingdom friends had managed to save Harry, but Freedom and her henchmen had managed to kill Dread. Freedom, along with three bad trucks named Boxer, Lena, and Taylor, had died too, and Scaredy had also died at the end of the battle. I don't get it, guys, said Sid. Why can't you guys use that spell that Yong Bao had taught you to bring Harry back when he died? The problem is that none of us can remember that spell, said Archie. Not a single detail, said Carl. Well, that is a problem. Well, hang in there guys, I'm sure you'll remember it sooner or later. And Sid puffed away. At least the bad trucks haven't been causing trouble since Dread died, said Samson. Oh, I'm sure it's only a matter of time before they pick a new leader and continue causing chaos for all of us, said Gator. But who would replace Dread? asked Samson. Why Fungus, of course, said Champion. He is Dread's right-hand truck after all. That dirty oil tanker couldn't even lead his own shadow, said Spencer. Yeah, say it loud and clear, Spencer, said Wally. Well, Scaredy may be gone, but at least we have the good furnace trucks working for us now, said Fang. Although there's been nothing to do other than the goods work, said Rotten. Well, like I said, said Gator, it's only a matter of time before those naughty trucks get back to doing their dirty work. Well, when they do, I'll be ready to take them on, said Tina. Yeah, me too. We'll give them what for. I was really looking forward to bringing Scaredy home and having him be my right-hand truck, said Harry. But that won't be happening anytime soon. Just then, Harry heard a voice that sounded awfully familiar. Excuse me, is this the mainland kingdom? Yes it is, said Benny. Who are you, and what are you doing here? Oh, I'm an old friend of Harry, and I've come all the way from the Brighton Kingdom to see him. Harry is over there, said Benny, but he's kind of not feeling happy right now. Oh, I'm sure he'll cheer up when he sees me, said the engine. Okay, if you say so, said Benny. And Vinny puffed away with his train. Harry was then able to see... Frankie, cried Harry. Oh, Wally, Carl, can you move please? Oh yeah, sure, they said. And they quickly were first onto the other line. So Frankie could come over. Hello, Harry. It's been too long, she said. It has indeed said Harry happily. The engines quickly told the other trucks about Frankie's return, and they hurried to the yard to see her. Some trucks, like Mario and Wallace, were old friends of Frankie. The other trucks hadn't met her yet. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you all, said Frankie, and it's so good to see you five again. So tell us, Frankie, said Mario, what ended up happening to you? When Thomas and I fell into the river all those years ago, I got swept up onto the shore by a tea switch, and a double fairly locomotive named Mighty Mac found me. They brought me to the Brighton Kingdom where I've been ever since. So what made you come here? asked Wallace. I saw the news report of the battle and deaths that happened at the Furnace Kingdom. When I saw Harry on the TV, I immediately took a boat to the Furnace Kingdom to find him. But when I got there, Albert told me that Harry and the good trucks had gone to the mainland kingdom, so I had to find my way over here. Harry smiled, 
but then quickly grew sad. I guess you know about Scarity then? Oh yes, I'm terribly sorry about him. I was hoping when I got here I could try to help you out somehow. Well, thank you. We'll see what we can do tomorrow. It's getting late everyone, let's go get some sleep. Come to our shed Frankie, you'll like it. So the trucks went to their shed, and Frankie got to sleep in one of the open berths. At the far back of the sidings, Todd, the furnace truck, was with Danny and Danielle. Psst, Todd, you sleep yet? Not yet. What's up, said Todd. Danny and I were just thinking that maybe you could also figure out a way to bring Scary back, said Danielle. Me? How? asked Todd. You like to invent stuff, said Danielle. You made that portal inside Boxer that could deliver cargo. Surely you could, I don't know, make some kind of portal that could take us to where Scaredy is and we could try to bring him back. That seems like a good idea, said Todd, but it also seems impossible. You can do it, Todd, said Danny. We believe in you. Okay, I'll try to think about it some more in the morning with Frankie and Harry, said Todd. For now, let's get some shut-eye. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. The next morning, Todd talked with Frankie and Harry about the slate car's idea. That sounds cool, said Frankie. You really should try to make that, Todd. Yeah, said Harry. If you can make a portal once, you can make another. Okay, said Todd. I'll get to work as soon as I can. As soon as Todd, Frankie, and Harry left, a red engine rushed onto the turntable. Albert, what are you doing here? asked Slimy. Hi, Slimy, said Albert. Ricky and I came here to warn you and the other trucks about something. What would that be? asked Tiny. The remaining bad trucks from the Furnace Kingdom have left, said Albert, and we believe they might have come here. But we haven't seen them, said Ethan. That's because they left early this morning. We actually managed to take a quicker boat here, and they're probably searching the outskirts for those bad trucks that you guys have to deal with on a weekly basis. Okay, thanks for the heads up, said Hector. We'll keep an eye out for them, said Ethan. I just hope they don't try to mess with any plans we may have to bring Scaredy back, said Fang. Alright, let's go, Topple, said Junk. I'm Tumble. Sorry, that's the problem with you guys having names so similar, said Junk. In the outskirts, Fungus was talking to his friends and the troublesome trucks from the Furnace Kingdom. Welcome, newcomers, said Fungus. I'm Fungus, and I will be your loyal leader. Excuse me, said Wildfire, who was one of the furnace trucks. No, 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 I'm the one who's going to be leader. What? Uh-uh, I'm Dredd's right-hand truck, so I'm taking his place as leader. Plus, you guys killed him, so none of you deserve a chance to lead. Well, if anyone should take Freedom's place as leader, and leader of all you guys, it should be me. My name is Wildfire, and I should prove I'm just as dangerous as Wildfire, and being leader will help me do that. Keep dreaming, Candlestick. Candlestick? Oh, knock it off you two, said Griffin. Oh, shut it, Griffin, said Fungus. Yeah, you're not the boss of us, said Wildfire. Well, I should be. An engine should be leading this army, both the trucks and the diesels. In your dreams, said Fungus. The arguing continued until Junk and Tummel arrived. Hey guys, guys. Shut it, Junk. What? Tomo and I were just spying on the trucks. Those furnace engines have alerted them about the new troublesome arrivals. And that diesel that Dread hated, Frankie, is back 
and is helping Harry find a way to bring Scaredy back, and I think Todd is trying to do something involving a portal. We must find out more about this, said Fungus. Grump, will you take Gideon and Uli and spy on Todd, Frankie, and Harry? You got it, said Grump. Let's go, guys, said Uli. Okay, guys, it's a good thing I brought my old blueprints from the Furnace Kingdom over to here. Now, I should be able to make a portal that will allow us to enter the place where Scaredy is. You mean like, Train Heaven? Yeah, sure, Train Heaven, we'll call it that. Anyways, I'll need some new parts and materials for the portal. I'll need you guys to fetch me some ropes and some gears. We'll go find some, said Danny. We'll be back before you know it, said Danielle. Okay, I'll collect the ropes. If Danielle, you could collect the gears. Sure, I'll find the gears. You take care of the ropes. I gotta tell this to the others. You sure about this? Yes, those trucks are gonna send a group into train heaven. You know what that means, right? Oh yes, yes we do. One of us will have to talk to them about this. I'll go. I'll be back shortly. One crate full of ropes and one crate full of gears. Nice work you guys, said Todd. Now I can make the portal that will allow us to access train heaven. This might actually work, said Frankie. Let's keep our brothers crossed, said Harry. Listen up, truck schmucks, said Wildfire. I just heard from Uli that Todd has some blueprints and parts to help make his portal. So our mission is to steal them so he can't make the portal. So why are we carrying dynamite, asked Tipper. That's a good question, said Topple. When we steal the supplies, we'll use this dynamite to blow up the tracks so that the good trucks can't follow us. Good plan, Wildfire, said Gideon. I'd like to see Fungus or Griffin top that one. I figured we were going to blow up the portal with this dynamite when it was completed. Yeah, I personally think it'd be better if we did that. Steal blueprints for the portal and blow up the tracks? Hmm, me and my friends will see about that. So we have to stop the bad trucks before we can talk to the good trucks, is that what you're saying? Yes, now, I have a plan to stop those trucks from stealing or blowing up anything. Listen carefully. There they are, said Wildfire. Just gotta go down the hill and Gideon will snatch the parts and blueprints when we race up. But I'm already carrying dynamite, said Gideon. Ah, uh, yes, well, you will throw your dynamite and then you'll snatch up the parts and blueprints, said Wildfire. Now, and the trucks tipped a water tower near the edge of the cliff over, and water splashed down on Tipper, Tumble, Tumble, and Gideon. Uh, hey, 
what just happened? I'm soaking wet. Hey, shut up, you truck schmucks, said Wildfire. Suddenly, Gideon slipped on the wet rails and bumped into his friends, and they came off the rails and fell down the hill. Wah! Oh, my head! My backside! My undercarriage! Ow! Hi, Todd! Fancy seeing you here! I thought you moved to the mainland kingdom. Whoa! Oh! Ow! Oh! Ow! Ow. Oh, hello, Todd. Aren't you a little far from home? Your new home, I should say? Nice try, you two. But we all know you guys are the ones who shouldn't be here. So beat it. We're not going down without a fight. Except the truck who's buried underneath his Conrad's. Get off of me, truck schmucks. Sit wildfire. All right, all right, no need to shout, said Topple. There, we're back on the rails. Now, trucks, throw the dynamite. Duh, but you said we were. Forget what I said, blow them up now. First of all, the dynamite's all in a pile by the side of the track. Second of all, it's soaked, so it won't explode. You gotta be kidding me. hi yeah, ah! Ow! Ah, curse you, Todd and Tina. We'll be back. Just you wait and see. Wildfire and his friends raced away. They didn't see some unfamiliar trucks on the upper track. Well, that was easy, said Tina. Maybe this time it was, but I can only assume there'll be more attacks. Tina? I'm putting you in charge of being the, um, Portal's bodyguard. Oh, really? Well then, I suppose I better get some help. So, Tina and Harry called the trucks over for a quick meeting. Should we talk to them now? We shouldn't interrupt the meeting. We'll come back later. Besides, we need to make sure the bad trucks and the diesels aren't making any evil plans. Alright trucks, said Tina. Just a little while ago, Todd, Harry and I were nearly attacked by wildfire and the remaining furnace trucks. Harry thinks there may be more attacks, so I've been put in charge of protecting the portal. I will need two teams to help me out. A team for the day shift, and a team for the night shift. Andrew, Ethan, Chris, and Nicholas. You will be the daytime guardians of the portal. And Mario, Lucy, Arnold, and Wallace. You will work the night shift. And Fang, you will lead the night crew while I lead the daytime crew. Fang was quite surprised at his new job. Oh, okay then, he said. And Danny and Danielle, said Todd, you two will help me make the portal. Oh, good, said the Slate Trucks, we'll be sure to help you out. Later that day, while Todd, Danny, and Danielle were working on the portal, Tina and the day crew noticed something in the distance. Heads up guys, we've got diesels at 12 o'clock, said Tina. Griffin and his diesel gang were approaching the trucks and the portal. You two stay with me, said Todd. Tina and her crew will take care of this. Hello, new trucks, said Griffin. From the Furnace Kingdom, is that right? Get out of here, Diesels, said Tina. You are forbidden to enter this area, and you are forbidden to tell us what to do. Diesels, attack! Run away, run away! You won't win next time, I can promise you that. 
after the diesels ran away, the trucks decided to move their stuff to a different spot. But as they passed over a bridge, the tracks suddenly broke underneath Danny's wheels. Tina pulled him to safety, but the crate that Danny had been carrying fell into the river and was swept away. Phew, that was close, said Danny. But now we've lost the crate of gear, said Danielle. And the blueprints were in that crate too, said Todd. Oh no, said Nicholas, we can't finish the portal without the blueprints and gears. We can find some more gears, but it could take a while for me to make some new blueprints, said Todd. Just then, Ricky, the Furnace Kingdom engine, pulled up with a goods train. I couldn't help but over here, he said. I know where you can find some blueprints. You do? Where? asked Nicholas. Well, you see, there's a farm on the far end of the west side of the outskirts. An engine named Roxanne works there. Who's Roxanne? asked Carl. Oh, I know her, said Slimy. She was a star on Eddie Wayne's TV show. I guess she went to work there after the show was cancelled, said Rotten. Anyways, said Ricky, in one of the season 3 episodes of Eddie Wayne's TV show, they were doing the same thing you guys are trying to do, make a portal to enter train heaven, and one of the props that Roxanne owns from the show is the blueprints for the portal. So if we can get the blueprints from Roxanne, then we can finish making the portal, said Nicholas. Brilliant idea, Ricky, said Chris. Let's go, Nicholas. Whoa, hold on, said Ricky. Roxanne's not exactly the easiest engine to convince to hand over something. I'm sure a little sweet talking will get us those blueprints, said Nicholas. I'm sure smooth talking will do the job, said Chris. I don't think so, said Nicholas. What if that doesn't work? We may not get another chance. While those two try to get the blueprints, I'll go and get some more gears, said Frankie. Thank you, Frankie. That would be very much appreciated, said Todd. So while Frankie went to find some gears, and Chris and Nicholas went to find Roxanne's farm, Fungus and the villains began making plans to stop the hero's mission. Alright everyone, listen up, said Fungus. I want some of you to go attack the good trucks while they're waiting for the new parts. Some of you go to Roxanne's farm and get those blueprints, and me and some others will go after Frankie. Let's move out, said Wildfire. Back in the mainland kingdom, Todd and his friends were unloading the remaining parts and materials for the portal. Suddenly, they heard the sound of diesel engines. Elsewhere, Frankie had found a new crate of gears. But then, she heard maniacal laughter. <laughs> Meanwhile, Chris and Nicholas had reached the farm on the far west end of the outskirts. <laughs> That must be Roxanne, said Chris. So, who's gonna ask her for the blueprints? I should do it. If I can sweet talk her, I'll let you smooth talk the villains. Sounds good to me. Um, excuse me. Hello. Hello, can I help you? Uh, yes, we are in desperate need of something. That's something being the blueprints prop from the Eddie Wayne TV show. Why would you want that? The blueprints are exactly the same as the ones our friend just lost. The blueprints for the portal to go to train heaven? Why do you need those? Why are you trying to make that portal? 
Well, you see, said Nicholas, we're on a very important mission. We're trying to make the portal to enter train heaven so we can find and bring back a close friend we lost a few weeks ago. And so we really need those blueprints to make this portal. So can we borrow them, please? Sure, you can have them. Really? Yes, because you said please. Manners work wonders. Let me just go get them from my storage. And Roxanne went into an old mine tunnel. She came out a minute later with the blueprints. Here you go, one set of blueprints for the portal to train heaven. Oh, thank you, said Nicholas. Yes, you have helped us out in a very big way, said Chris. We are eternally grateful. You're welcome, said Roxanne. Now, good luck with your little mission. Now I need to water these dry plants and grass. If they remain dry for much longer, they're gonna catch fire. Chris and Nicholas began to back away when suddenly, stop right there, trucks. Oh, are these some of your friends? Asked Roxanne. They most certainly are not, said Chris crossly. Let's make this quick and easy. Hand over the blueprints. Uh, N-E-V-E-R, said Nicholas. Then enjoy your little play date with fire. Ha! And wildfire rammed into a searchlight which was still on. It tipped over and broke. Sparks from the light bulb landed on the dry grass and a fire quickly erupted. And I'll be taking these, said Huggy as he pulled the water with his cars away. Then Wildfire pulled the flatbed that Roxanne had been pulling earlier onto the points, so to as to prevent Nicholas from getting out. Ha ha! Later losers! Ha ha! Oh no! cried Roxanne. The fire began to spread across the dry fields. Chris, Nicholas, and Roxanne were trapped. What do we do now? asked Chris. Quick, down the mine tunnel, said Roxanne. So the two trucks and Roxanne raced into the mine tunnel. Is this supposed to keep us safe? asked Chris. We can go through the mine, said Roxanne. There's supposed to be an exit somewhere down the line. We can get out of here from there. Okay, said Nicholas, but maybe you should lead the way. While the trucks and their new friend made their way through the mine, Frankie was in a bit of a tight spot. Well, Frankie, it's been a very long time. Too long, if you ask me. Back off, you truck schmucks. Nobody calls fungus a schmuck. Get her, boys. Brick charged towards Frankie. But Chunk and Rex stopped to avoid hitting each other on the points. After you. Oh no, after you. I insist. Prepare to join Scaredy and Train Heaven. I'm not going anywhere except back to my friends. Ow! Oh! Oh! Ow! You first. No, you. I'll go first next time. Ugh. Guys, she's gonna get away. Block her. Ah! Oh, ow! Ouchie! Ta -ta. If Frankie hadn't been in such a hurry, she would have seen a red truck. Back in the mine, Roxanne and the trucks were struggling to find their way through the mine. Sorry my lamp's not giving enough light, said Roxanne. 
Why won't these lights in the tunnel light up? asked Chris. The mine generator bit the dust a few years ago. I'm afraid there's no power to light up the mine. Oh, really? Whoa, the lights are on now, said Chris. Huh, that's odd, said Roxanne. At least we can see better now, said Chris. Now let's keep going. Get out of here, Griffin, said Todd. We're not leaving just yet, said Griffin. Yeah, neither are we trucks. We'll see about that, said Tina. Take that, you filthy coal cart. Ow! How dare you? Take this, you sticky tar tanker. Whoa, missed me. Whoa, that almost hit me. We're almost to the exit, said Roxanne. Just need to turn left at this next junction and we'll be out of here. Hang on. Sounds like something's approaching. Look out! Suddenly another cargo car came down the line. It hit the first one and they came off the rails. Whoa, that was close, said Nicholas. Where did both of those cars come from? I have no idea, said Roxanne. Roxanne, Nicholas, and Chris exited the mine and saw the trucks in the middle of a fight. We gotta help them, said Chris. Come on. Look, Wallace, said Wally. That must be a new female diesel to Griffin's gang. I think I know what to do. Watch. Wally rolled forward with his eyes closed. Hello, new diesel. Might I say you have the most beautiful eyes. Ah! Ugh. Hey, I got one. Oh yeah? Ow! Hey! Ha uh ha! -huh. Take that! Oh! Ow! That'll teach you. Hey, no one does that to my friend. Take that! Whoa! Ow! Hey, Black Diesel, think fast. Ow! What the? Is it too late for me to join the fight? It's never too late, said Harry. Join in, Frankie. How do you like that? Whoa! Don't worry, Andrew. I'll get you back on the rails. I'm trying my best, but you're kind of in a spot where you won't get back on the line. Whoa! Uh, ow! Thank you! What? You guys? Roxanne, behind you. Back off, you blockhead. Don't you dare. Ah! Yeah! Ho 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 ho! Ow! Candlestick! Candlestick! Give it up, guys! You can't win! Beat it! Come on, guys, let's go! Let's scram, said Dominic. Get lost, said Harry. Ow, said Wooly. Hey, I was sleeping. Sheesh. Good work, everyone, said Harry. We got rid of them. 
and we got the gears and blueprints. Now we can finish work on the portal, said Todd. Todd and his friends worked on the portal for hours. By the next morning, the portal was finished. Done, and we're ready to enter train heaven and bring Scaredy back. Excellent, finally. Oh, but it's going to take about an hour to start up and get working. An hour? What do we do for an hour? Plan a three-sided attack, of course. A three-sided attack, huh? Not if we can help it. <laughs> So Fungus went to find Griffin in Wildfire. Once the plan was made, Fungus went to find Hooky and some of his trucks. The Diesels will take the left side and the Furnace trucks the right, and we will take the middle, seeing as we're clearly number one. Haha, <laughs> we are number one! Let's go. As Fungus and his gang headed to the location of the portal, Griffin and his gang began making their way through the outskirts. Move it, these old dwarfs, said Griffin. Ready? Now. Suddenly, a cargo car sped down the line and crashed into the building by the side of the track. It fell over and blocked the diesel's path. What's this? The line's blocked. This won't do, said Bowler. I could push through the rubble with my cow catchers and side plates. Well, you can't because you're behind me. I will push through. Griffin rolled up to the rubble and pushed as hard as he could, but the rubble wouldn't budge. <laughs> A little help here? The Diesels buffered up behind Griffin and pushed, but they pushed too hard and Griffin came off the rails and hit the mountain. Oh! Well, that worked a little bit. Oh! Oh no! Watch out! Watch out! Oh! Back up! A rock slide fell onto the tracks. Now it was impossible for the Diesels to go through the tunnel. Way to go, Diesel Dorks, said Griffin. Ow! Hey, we're sorry, said Hunter. Now we gotta find a different way to the kingdom. Come on, let's go. Meanwhile, the trucks were trying to decide who was going to go into the portal to find Scaredy. But then... Heads up, guys. We've got mainland and furnace trucks coming our way. Ha <laughs> ha that's right, and the diesels will be getting here soon, too. You better surrender, or you're gonna get... Ow! Destroy them, said Fungus. Hey, where are the diesels? asked Wildfire. I'm gonna knock you into next week. By next week, we'll have Scaredy back and you guys will be laying in a pile crying like babies. Oh yeah? We'll see about that. Ow! How dare you? Ah! How many times are we gonna have to deal with you idiots? I'm not an idiot. You're right. You're not an idiot. You're clearly... Ow! Oh! Chris! Nicholas rushed over to where Chris had landed near the edge of a cliff. Horrid Hooky and the furnace trucks were quick to surround him. Let's see you get out of this one.
Where did you guys come from? From the subway tunnels, you idiots. Whoa. Whoa. Oh no. Ah. You will pay for that. Oh no, we won't. Take this. Ow. Get off of me, fossil crate. Ow. Topple. Oops. Sorry about that. Ow! Ow! Take that. I hope that hurt. Who the heck are you guys? Asked Nicholas. Truck's here to help. You can call us your friends if you want to. Come on, boys. Let's take care of the rest of those truck schmucks. There you go, Chris. Thanks, Nick. Whoa! We can't defeat them without the diesels. Where the heck are they? I'm out of here. Come on, guys. This isn't over. Okay, that's finally done. And now the portal is ready to go. Okay, then. Who's going to go for the portal with me? Me! cried Sonic. I'll go, said Frankie, who had just rolled up. Can I come too? came a voice. What the? Who are you? I'm Eguardo, and these are my friends Shorty, Bernie, and Power. Hi, hello, pleasure to meet you. We're good trucks who live in subway tunnels under the kingdom. I see, and why do you want to come with us? Well, you see, we have three friends who are in train heaven. We've been meaning to ask you about going with you for a while, but we've been busy messing up the bad trucks' plans for you. Really? Well, thank you. Three friends, you say? I suppose one of you can come along. Then I'll go. Thank you, Harry. Alright, let's get going. The sooner we find Scaredy and the other three trucks, the better. One quick thing, said Todd. When you go through, the exit side of the portal will be on the other side of Train Heaven. You'll have to go there to get out. Or you could also go back the way you came through this one. It's up to you, just depends on how far Scaredy is and those other trucks. So Frankie and the trucks all coupled up together. Okay, here we go, said Harry. Wish us luck everyone. So the three trucks and Frankie went into the portal. The other truck shot a good luck as they went through. They soon found themselves in train heaven. Okay, Scaredy is a black oil tanker with a big tooth. What do your friends look like? One is a yellow paint tanker covered in red, green, and blue paint named Messy. The next one is a long yellow lemonade car named Lizzy. And the last one is a boxcar named Cricket, who's orange and blue like Sonic. Really? said Sonic. Then there was trouble. The friends didn't see some loose rocks on the track, and they crashed into them, slid off the rails, and fell into a pit of sand. Oh. Uh-oh. 
Oh, that's just great. We haven't even been here for three minutes and we've come off the rails. Guys, what does that sign say? It says, Stick Sand, keep off, said Eguardo. Stick Sand? Do they mean quicksand? No, stick sand is a thing in heaven. I saw it when I was last here, said Harry. Well, now we're stuck in sticky sand. What do we do now? What else? Yell for help! 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 That voice, could it be? Hopefully someone heard that. Wait, I think I hear someone coming. Scaredy, is that you? Sonic, Frankie, Harry... Thomas? What are you doing here? I, uh, took a nasty fall from the side of a cliff, and the brake fan at the back of my train finished me off. I was distracted because I was finally remembering you and the good trucks after forgetting about you for so many years. Oh, really? You forgot about us? Yes, I'm afraid I did, but I remember you now. What are you doing here? We came here through a portal to find our friend Scaredy. Ahem. Oh yeah, and some of his friends too, but we're stuck. Can you help us? I don't know if I can, said Thomas. I mean, how can I... If you can help us, we'll get you out of here along with Scaredy and the others. Okay, I'll try. Actually, I saw a cable car back down the line with some other trucks. I'll go ask them if I can use it to rescue you. And Thomas reversed back down the line as fast as his wheels could carry him. How long do you think he'll be? After waiting in the stick sand for a few minutes, Thomas returns with the cable car. I'm back, and I brought some extra help. Messy. Cricket, Lizzie, cried Eguardo happily. Hello, Eguardo. It's been too long, said Lizzie. Too long if you ask me, said Cricket. You guys are in quite a mess. Don't worry, we'll get you out, said Messy. And so Thomas and the trucks used the hook on the cable car to grab Harry, Sonic, Frankie, and Eguardo. Soon they were all back on the tracks. Thanks guys, said Eggwato to his friends. And thank you, Thomas. You're welcome. So, do you have everyone you came for, or... Not yet. We still need to find a black oil tanker with a big tooth named Scaredy. Okay, let me just put this away and we'll go look for him. Meanwhile, back in the mainland kingdom, the trucks were just sitting there, not sure what to do next. But just then, Griffin and the Diesels arrived. Where are the trucks? Huh, we must have somehow gotten here before them. Yes. Actually, your truck friends were already sent packing. So you might as well go back to them. We came all this way. We're not going back without finding you guys. Charge! Oh brother, here we go again. Griffin charged and he shoved Tina off the line. Her load of swords and shields flew through the air. The swords hit the blueprints which were laying nearby, and the blueprints were torn into shreds. Then a strong gust of wind blew all the pieces away. Melissa, the new diesel, then rammed into Andrew and sent him flying. 
some large rocks flew from Andrew and they hit the portal. The portal then started falling apart. An emergency alarm started to go off. Okay, I'm ready to find Scaredy. Oh, and Frankie? Harry? When we get out of here, I'll have to head back to Sildor, and I want you guys to come with me. Really? Really? Yes, you guys have been gone from Sildor for too long, and bringing you guys back home is the least I can do for you helping me get out of here. Well thank you Thomas, that would be very nice of you. Yes, that would be nice. I hope you won't mind if I bring all my buddies along too. Not at all. The more good trucks, the merrier. Huh? What? What's that noise? Oh no, that's an alarm saying that the portal is falling apart. We need to get out of here. Back to the way we came in, said Eduardo. No, we can't go just yet. We still haven't found Scaredy. Scaredy, Scaredy. Scaredy, Scaredy, Scaredy. What? Harry, come on, let's go, said Frankie. Harry didn't want to leave just yet, but he didn't have a choice. If he stayed any longer, the portal would break and they would be trapped in heaven. The engines and trucks quickly made it back to the portal. They sped out and they smashed into the diesel. Oh, ow, oh, oh, ow. Ouch. Oh, ow. Oh. That's enough for one day. Let's get out of here, guys. Griffin, wait up! Right after the diesels left, the portal fell to pieces. When the dust cleared, the portal was nothing but a pile of small pieces of debris. Oh no, said Andrew. The blueprints, they're gone and the portal is completely destroyed. Ugh. We found our old friend Thomas over there and Eguardo's friends, but we weren't able to find security in time. The trucks were upset. Their main mission to find and bring back security had not been accomplished. With the portal destroyed and the blueprints gone, the trucks would not be able to make a second attempt. After the mess was cleaned up, Connor and Caitlin came to help Thomas and Frankie take all the good trucks back to Sodor. Eguardo and his gang said they would stay behind. Our home is the subway tunnels, said Eguardo. We'll still be here if you ever come back. Sorry about your friend. Thanks for your help, said Lissy. Goodbye, said Cricket. Goodbye, said the engines. As Thomas, Frankie, Connor, and Caitlin pulled their long lines of trucks away. We're sorry you couldn't find Scaredy in time, said Connor. But at least you're back with your old friends, Thomas and Frankie, and you're returning to Sodor at long last. Maybe that will cheer us up a little, said Wally. The engines and trucks 
soon arrived at the kingdom of Sildor. The engines were thrilled to see Thomas. Thomas, cried Percy, where have you been? We haven't seen you for days. I uh, had a nasty accident, but Frankie rescued me and took me to the works at the mainland kingdom. Once I was repaired, I told her I would bring her and all these good trucks back with me. Welcome back Frankie, said Proteus. And welcome back Harry, Sonic, Mario, Wallace and Wally, said Lady. And welcome all of Harry's new friends. Thanks. It's good to be back on Sodor, said Harry. The trucks were happy to be back on Sodor with Thomas and Frankie. But they were still sad that they had failed to find Scaredy. But what they didn't know was that Scaredy had heard Sonic's loud voice before the portal was destroyed. They also didn't know that the other side of the portal was still at the other side of Train Heaven. Scaredy could see it way off in the distance. And he was going to make his way to it. And he was going to take his friends with him. Guys, who's ready to leave this place? I am. Yes, I want to leave. Me, me, me. Hmm? What? Oh, oh yeah, me too. But how are we gonna get out of here?